Hello everyone, my name is Fox. Let me introduce you to the Aya Eve. This is a new handheld gaming PC that has come a long way. For some that might not remember, in April of this year, there was a video that came out talking about an AMD gaming handheld largely held together entirely by Lego bricks. Some time passes and we see that old Lego prototype turn into a 3D printed case. For the most part, it seemed like there was still a considerable amount of time to translate this device from an extremely rough looking prototype into what we're seeing now. So it's been three months since that time for this newer prototype to show up, and I've asked some questions towards the Aya group to help me try and find out a bit more information. All right, so let's jump into the specs of this device, and I want to mention this again. This is all tentative. A lot of this stuff could change. This is just what they are currently targeting based on some of the questions that I've asked and some of the information that has already previously been posted even months ago. So the current name of the handheld is the Aya Eve. It is using the AMD 4500U. That could change, but largely that's what they've been saying for months, and I would wager that that's going to stay the same, especially from a price performance angle. They are going to include 16 gigabytes of dual channel RAM. It won't run in single channel. They specifically men mentioned dual channel, which is obviously great because we need that bandwidth for the iGPU to fully reach its potential. However, they are not very confident on the frequency of the RAM. They are targeting 4266 megahertz. That might change, but they are at least targeting the highest frequency RAM that they could possibly put in this machine. There will be 512 gigs of NVMe storage. Uh, it is unclear what type of brand they are going to be using, but it is NVMe, so that is a great baseline. The display itself is a 7-inch 1280 by 800 IPS LCD. I'm told that it covers 70% of the NTSC color spectrum, uh, so it should be relatively nice, great viewing angles, and decent color. There will be a mouse mode on the joysticks themselves, so while they're connected, you, can, you won't be beholden to using the touch input only as your main input device for pointing around and mousing around on the GUI there will be a mouse mode so that you can basically just use the joysticks as a mouse mode and that would be something that you can activate and initialize. The battery is 47 watt hour and later on we're going to kind of look at some additional photos that kind of back that statement up. 47 watt hour, uh, watt hour battery especially where it's placed um, where they've shown diagrams and when they look at the scale it is left justified in terms of where the, the weight distribution is. So right now everything is kind of lining up. The information that they're providing with images is kind of lining up with the specs that they are giving us so that is all a positive and we'll kind of touch base on that later on the controllers are both wired and bluetooth when they are wired they operate as x input when you disconnect them they do go bluetooth obviously this will need to be initialized um, for that to happen I, it remains to be seen how quickly and rapidly that happens. It should be noted that older PC games will break in this particular regard. Um, a lot of PC games, the controller needs to be initialized before starting the game, and if you were to try to go Bluetooth afterwards, you will largely have a broken controller. Even connecting it afterwards, the game will no longer work. So that's something to be super mindful of. If this largely only applies to older PC games, not newer ones. Anything past 2014 shouldn't suffer from this, but it's just something to be mindful of. The Wi-Fi is potentially going to be an in, uh, Intel AX200. This seems to still be in the air, but that would put it at Wi-Fi 6. Again, that could change, um, and we don't know just yet. The international price they're saying is going to be around 600 USD. Obviously, the domestic price is going to be cheaper, but that is what the international price should be around. It could be lower, it could be higher. But just around 600 is where we are right now. So uh, let's go take a look at the pictures of the device that have been revealed so far. So here is the heatsink of the device. What they've told me is that it is targeting 18 watt if they're using the 4500U. The heatsink alone, if you look at this, it does look like it would be able to support 18 watt, especially on Ryzen 4000U. That is a pretty uh, cool chip to begin with. But I would personally say because we're at a 47 watt hour battery, uh, the total system power should be around 30 watt. And I'm trying to find that information out. Um, I was actually on my Discord trying to get more information from Alex, who has been re uh, releasing this, as well as Noir Bright. Um, basically, we're trying to get a bit more information. And there's already a lot of information provided. Um, my personal 
opinion is that they should target 12 watt because that would get them around 20 watt total system power uh, and then you'd get a little bit over two hours of battery life and still have a lot of performance especially if we start disabling uh, CPU cores uh, we can better distribute power to those GPUs anyway this is what the heatsink currently looks like and we'll be able to get a better view of this from the top angle as well here is the display connected to this prototype board now if we go back you take a look at the NVMe slot here. We can take a look at these ports. If we line these up and rotate it, it all lines up. So this is the same board that they're that they're looking at, obviously with just a different heatsink on here, and the NVMe is obviously in. Now, the one thing that I would like to point out, if we zoom into this picture, just to kind of in this particular prototype of the image that they sent out a while ago, we can see that it is EFQ 1K D9. That's what it is here. You can see 16 gigs of RAM and obviously the uh, 4500U chipset in here. Now, uh, this is all great information and this is them testing, but this is kind of the display that you should pretty much anticipate what is being used when it's all put together. Uh, here it is uh, all put together. You can kind of see we can kind of see that on the left side of the display that it's lifting off a bit, uh, which kind of makes sense. If we look over on the right side, it's definitely more flush. You can see it's more flush here and just taped down. But if we go over here, you can see that the tape is barely holding on and it's pushing off against it. This makes sense because you can see that this is where the display part of it is. So this is going to be pushing up against the display. So a lot of these things, when we kind of combine all these uh, images together and kind of sandwich these pieces together, everything's starting to make a lot more sense it does line up that what they are showing in the previous prototype pictures and how it's all coming together is what they're saying it is a few things of this image this image is actually super critical so number one here is you can see that it is running off battery you can see that it is the windows battery mode so there is a battery management system that windows is interfacing with and this is super critical now there is one piece of information that i tried to get from alex on my discord i was trying to get him to go into hardware info to see if he can show us the battery metrics themselves so that we can definitely see that the system is reporting as 47 watt hour um as well as what the total system power would be there's a lot of information yet and that'll come in another video but this is already super positive um so here we are taking a look at the front of it you can see that there is no cables connected to it at all and more to the point you can see right over here that like obviously the the device itself is hovering over here there's nothing holding it up that's because the battery is so heavy the 47 watt hour battery we can see that the total device weighs 650 grams but all of the weight most of the weight is largely over here and that's this is where the battery is the battery is the heaviest part and over here is the lighter weight part so the balance of the device is even left justified so these everything is lining up to be exactly how it should now you can see over here you can see the cooler and stuff and over here is the 47 watt hour battery this is flipped over uh, basically, this is the left controller. The left controller is over here. The left controller is over here. We're basically looking at the back side of the device in this particular image that Noirbright had. Um, yeah, you can see even your back of Aya. Uh, this is what Noirbright had done to kind of show people what, what it was going to be. And indeed, that's how it is lining up. So this is a super informative picture in that it's running on battery. We can see it's running on battery on Windows itself. The left justified weight distribution, uh, the balance of the, the device is left justified exactly as it should be based on this image. So all of the information that we're being given so far, we can determine to be relatively true because how it's all lining up. Even the display cable is getting pushed up over here. A lot of the information that we have is kind of all aligning together that this prototype is actually running as it should. Interesting, especially so here we have it connected and I had asked if they can get a better picture to show right down here and indeed you can. You can see it's connected as it should. I would wager that this is actually, there is a better battery management system at the hardware level. This is not something that is like how the smock was doing it where there was another battery meter that was connected to try to pull the battery this is exactly what we want we just need to find out what the total system power is going to be and then we can get a better idea of how battery life should ultimately be here's a front on picture of the device 
um, and then they're just kind of installing stuff. So there's probably going to be demo videos that are going to start coming out. Uh, one thing that I would like to point out is that we can clearly see that they are using Switch-like analog sticks. Obviously, these are probably going to be not Nintendo-made. These are going to be clone sticks. But basically, you could you could say that the feel of them should decidedly be Switch-like, which I'm not opposed to. And then you have a very traditional type of D-pad. Uh, and then this says Turbo. I don't know what turbo means. T U R B. I can only think that this is turbo. We can see a very Xbox Dreamcast like control uh, D pad layout, uh, face button layout. No, even in this image, it's T U R. It almost seems like this is going to be the turbo button. <laughs> Why does it have a turbo button? I got to figure out what this button is. I have to ask that question. Um, and that'll be for the next video. And then this is the top of the device itself. Here you can see the Joy-Con switch disconnect. So you will push this in to remove that controller. Likewise over here. And here we can see the top of the heatsink as well. So this is the exhaust. Uh, I It remains to be seen what the back of this device looks like because it's going to need to pull air in. Shoulder, shoulder buttons are. You can see there are dual. Altogether, it's looking pretty good. We can see there's one screw here and one missing here. This is probably volume and power. And then you have the main power input. Okay. So actually here is the bottom of the device and there is no inlet here. So it most likely has to have air, air inlet on the back of the case. Um, and it doesn't look like there are large feet here. So you shouldn't, you really shouldn't place this device flat when using it. Uh, you should really try to avoid that. I don't even know if there's gonna be kickstands so that's like two questions I have to ask. What are, what's this turbo button? And will there be a kickstand of some sort so that um, it's easier? Well, you know, very Switch-like. Uh, here you can see a micro SD card, another USB-C port, a USB-A port, 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And then this is, I guess, just part of the rails. Anyway, that's going to be the end of what we know so far regarding the Aya Eve. This looks to be, um, I mean, it's amazing how fast they've come along. Uh, looking at this display connector, I'm not seeing anything that weird. I, I'm thinking that this is a MIPI based display, but it looks like they are already converting that fine. If the battery works and the display is working, they just really have to figure out the controls. Um, it, I'm trying to figure out like in my head, what is really left? I mean, it's really just kind of honing in on all of this and brushing it up and making sure it's better. Just kind of making it polished, but so far it's looking like there's not a bunch of giant red flags a lot of information is lining up to be exactly what they're saying it's going to be so it's super interesting there will be an official aya discord and i will share that link with you guys as soon as they create it and i'll be sharing some other links to um, their facebook group and some other links that they want to sh uh, share with me if you guys want to know more information but yeah that's it Thank you guys so much for your time. Thanks for watching.